Fringe Benefits of Education. This is our first Thursday event, and my name is Dr. McDowell. I'm the Dean of Enrollment Management and Registrar. Tonight we have a wonderful young man who will be here to talk to you. Fringe Benefits of Education is for young men 17 to 24. As Roger and I to think about where the gap was, what we identified was a gap for young men 17 to 24 that if you're in high school, you usually can get access to a mentor because they're a program. Once you get out of high school, if you're not working somewhere where there's a mentoring program, there's usually not an opportunity for you. Then we found that there was a lot of articles on the plight of African-American males and what are you doing? And everyone talking about by age third grade, they already have a sale with your name on it based on your reading level. And we said there's got to be something better. We know young men for which that is not the case. But we know those young men who make it without that being the case because they have a circle of support around them. I have two sons for which that is not the case. You all know young men in your lives for whom that is not the case. Also, tonight we took the liberty to share with you some job opportunities. I connected with the Career Center and said, look, I have young men who are looking for work. We did an awesome thing with Livestrong. I connected with the lady and though everyone is doing things online now, we had the young men that evening and young women who were present complete paper applications. I faxed them in during the interviews they had here in Wyandotte County. They interviewed several and even one of our hard to place young men now works out at the Livestrong Stadium and one of the young ladies who comes regularly works there too. So I shared that with the Career Center. I said, I need some help because just going the normal route, we're not gonna get what we need. So they faxed to me or emailed to me this afternoon, these three opportunities you have on this pink sheet, but it's up to you to apply. If you need help with your resume, again, up in the Career Center, Eric Kirkwood is willing to assist and has helped many through the years. So again, there's no opportunity this holiday season. They also tell me Coles is hiring for seasonal help as well as J.C. Penney's and that Legends have several stores out there that are hiring as well. I think they just have a new uh, Ralph Warren store uh, that's there. So there's many opportunities for holiday employment if you want an extra job or if you just want to work a short period of time. So again, we want you to be successful because we like to brag about you and what you were doing. I think one of the other participants told me he started his orientation uh, today out at Applebee's. And I said, great, once you're done with orientation, tell me what shift you'll be working and I'll come out and have lunch or we'll come out and have dinner on that particular day. So again, we take great joy in your success. When we have opportunities to do community service, I need you all to do community service. Only a couple of hours is all it takes, and all that says is I'm committed to my community the same way my community is committed to me. All right, we have some exciting news. Some of you have been asking about when are we going to be on Facebook, when are we going to be on Twitter? When are we going to be on the college homepage? 
and when are we presenting? I know Roger and I should have an opportunity to present at the Kansas <coughs> Dean Conference yeah. September 13th and 14th of this month. So as a result of that, we're very excited to tell your story. Uh, well, we want Mark and Roger to come up and share the work they've been doing with giving us a presence on the college homepage so that anybody who's looking for FBOE can see it. And some of you might see your faces there as well. So Roger and Mark. What we wanted to do is, like she says, is conventional with our conventional. So we want to make sure we have a Facebook, have a website, and make it applicable to what you do when you do every day when you're on Facebook. Uh, my name is Mark Davis. I'm a digital design student here at the school, and I'm the uh, POE intern. Uh, so I handle all the paperwork, right now, uh, transfer all the stuff you write into the computers, uh, for doing the presentations for Dr. McDowell. So when she goes and talks to the board and deans and stuff like that, uh, they know what's happening. They know you guys are showing up, what you're doing in the community. And I'm also doing the, uh, the websites and just some taking pictures and putting them online as well. So I just kind of do uh, everything I can with the hours I get. We post pictures, things. Well, we're gonna start doing with the site. We got it going on. We got, got pictures of things, events. We got slides. We're gonna put eventually put videos on there too, and y'all can go in there and. You know, post things. We'll try to have questions of the day, things you're going through, what's the big topic within your world during the week, and not meeting on Thursday that we can chat and do these things on here live. We're gonna try to put a Skype component on there too, but we can look at you live and talk to you. So we want to embrace technology in a way to make a difference to the point where we can uh, talk to you from your house. You know, you know, yes, like I was telling Doc, one of the ideas I want to do is sometimes when Doc is out of town. We still have a meeting with Doc with Skype. You know, we still she can still be there seeing us, vice versa. We gotta use that. We gotta use that. Yes, and, and that's what this technology is about. Where you can just get on so everybody knows what the website is now, so it's no big deal, but it is a big deal because it's a place you can go and know that you're a part of that. Everybody, everybody with FBOE is a part of that. The community. This is a way to let the community know that we're taking a stand and we're actually doing something. And it's, it's on them to join this movement that um, you know we started. So that's basically what we're doing with that one. As y'all see that we're in an election period where you got things going on, whether it be the recession or things like that, it lets you know that you got a school and people here to help you get jobs, help you get educated. When all you see on the news is people suffering, people going through it, people need jobs, people fighting. You know, Democrat versus Republican fighting to try to get some in health care. And here's a school and people in the community are willing to take a chance. It don't, it don't cost you nothing to come here. Here's the kicker. You yeah, ain't you no know, membership fee. All you got to do is show up and that goes away on the paper. No more excuses when somebody lay it out for you. Right. And she said it. The school, only thing the school required for you is to go to class when you're in school and have respect. And it's easy when you think about it. Ask somebody who's doing time in prison. See, y'all think of the person hanging with you that's cheering you to do something bad that they're cheerleaders. They're not cheerleaders. These are people that's going to help you go, go to jail, be unemployed, or be a dropout. You got to get around people that you might think is square, but guess what? Like the guy that just died from Africa. No, you can call him a nerd all you want. His legacy is going to transcend everything, even though he's dead. Look at the leg, when he says something, and I watched one of his speeches, he was talking about how fascinating death was. He, he was talking about how that's the only thing that you know that's certain is death. And it has a way of clearing everything out so that you can start again. He said, so all you have left is your legacy and things that you need to do. You know what I'm saying? He was a believer in Christ too. It was shocking, because normally you get people that hide they don't believe too much, but he did believe in Christ, you know, and the higher power will get to heaven. But time waits for no one, so why waste time doing something that's not going to be productive to you, your family, the things you're trying to do? What's up? This is Roger M. Suggs, Friends of Benefit Outreach Liaison. Right here, we're doing what we need to do 
to uh, make a difference in life. That's what it's all about, making a difference. And I challenge the community, once again, I challenge you to get out and show up to this event and show the young people that you do care. We can, it's one thing to complain about it and not do nothing. It's one thing to complain about it and do something positive to change their mind, knowing that you're there clapping when they do something great. Friends, benefit of education, what are you doing? This is um, Tyrone Bates. We just wanted to talk to him before he gets ready to speak and slam us home. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm ready to work. Uh, I'm excited about this opportunity to speak. Any chance I get to talk to anyone, I'm grateful. You know, I have young sons, and so I, I, I treasure every opportunity I can to speak before people. And so I'm humble. I'm ready to work. And this is uh, one of our top students, and, you know, right here. Let people know your name. I'm Nico Barnett, pre-med major. What has Friends Benefit did for you? Like I've been been coming a couple of weeks, and from my experience in the last couple of weeks, it's been tremendous. Like, like my couple of years of school, it's been a little rocky as well as would it be for most typical students. But coming here has got me on top of things, and I'm more focused than I've ever been. That's right. There you go, Friends Benefit. We about the community. What you about? Peace. With no further delay. I ain't gonna say that, but they got them listed as community activists and educational consultants. But to me, he's my brother, he's a brother about action. He got the swag. I'm, I'm gonna let him speak for himself because he's well spoken. Everybody give a big hand for Mr. Tyrone Bates. Yes, sir. If you can do me a favor, just stand up for a second. <laughs> if I get up, a stretch. <laughs> <laughs> Here you go, take a couple deep breaths. Um, all right, go ahead and have a seat. Okay, now stand up again. I'm an educator by trade. Uh, my background is in biology and chemistry. And so, um, Eduardo was one of my former students. <laughs> Fine young man, go ahead and have a seat. Um, <laughs> he knows how I get down. Uh, I want to make sure you hear something. You ain't gonna hear everything, but you're gonna get something. One more time, you can stand up for me. Uh, you know, they say good things come in three. <laughs> so that was your third time. Hopefully we can get you get you right. Go ahead and have a seat, thank you. <laughs> now let me start off by saying thank you. Um, I have to say thank you to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for his grace and mercy on my life to gift me with the ability to deliver my experiences and thoughts to an audience of such. And, and I'm always reduced when I'm afforded the opportunity to speak to people. Reduced, not blown up, not thrown up. I'm reduced because you all are God's people. And so whenever I get a chance to speak to God's people, I gotta be mindful of what I say, thoughtful and precise. So I gotta get in and get out. And that's what I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna get in and I'm gonna get out. I'm not gonna take long. I'm gonna say what I have to say. You fool. And I wanna fill your mind up a little bit more after you start getting the benefit. So tonight I'm gonna talk about being in a position to compete. Being everybody heard that before, being in a position to compete. Right? Can somebody tell me why it's important to serve or do community service? Now, you know, I'm here to talk. Right to share some words, but I think we are at a point in, in our society and our development that we need to get into a dialogue. And so we're gonna have time for a dialogue too, right? Right, but, but I have a question I'll pose to you, and I don't care who responds, but why is it important to serve the community? I'm leaving you with that question, obviously. Why is it important? Why do you think? It's your community. So, in the back. I'm sorry? Back. To give back. Why is it important to serve? To give back. So that's on the back side of what I want to say. That in order to be served by the community, you have to serve it. Right. How could you take something and not give anything? That's called stealing. That's exactly what it's called. So community service is important because in, in order for you to get, you got to give. And it's not in any order. It's better to give than to what? Y'all say that, but I don't think we do it all the time. Let me give my disclaimer before I begin. Tyrone Ty Trivet explained on a late night talk show that through his challenges in life, one of the lessons that he has gleaned from his shortcomings is the fact that we should all be aware and mindful of the fact that the preacher 
the messenger, the teacher, the rabbi, the president, the lecturer, and the speaker, all do not live outside or above the words or the message that they or we present. This is important. I mean, this was a deep piece. The preacher, the rabbi, the teacher, um, the coach um, are all beneath the words. They, they, they press toward the mark. It's not that they have it. It's not that they got it figured out because it's coming out of my mouth. It's going to sound good because I'm going down on paper and I'm going to read it to you. I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to orate it to you. It's going to sound good. But they don't belong to me, these words don't. These thoughts don't, they're all given to me. And so I'm as a vessel, broken, I give it back to you. So don't think I got it because I'm a messenger. So uh, I say that as I begin to, to start off uh, tonight and, uh, and share my thoughts and my words with you. Uh, contrary to popular belief, do not miss my message by paying so close attention to the shortcomings of the messenger because it is truly in those shortcomings that we learn lessons about life. As men and women, we are fallible and subject to mistakes and missteps, but it is not the mistake that defines us. It is our response to them that characterizes us. Everyone here tonight, if there was a such thing as a life microscope, and we would put our lives under it, we would see things that would tempt all of us to question doubt and judge one another. But those things are not what our attention should be fully attended to. Rather, it is how we responded to those choices that we made, how we responded. Hopefully, the perspective I share with you today will give yet another perspective on how to place yourself in a position to compete against the odds that the world and life lessons may stack up against you. I've put together what I'd like to call the the, the six P's of positioning. The six P's of positioning, planning, preparation, presentation, people, patience, and perseverance. Planning, pre preparation, presentation, people, patience, and perseverance. Yes, sir. We're going to start off with planning. Planning. Planning involves understanding your past, your passion, and your position. Planning involves understanding your past, passion, and position. So knowing your past, your position, thank you. I was waiting for somebody to give it to me. Knowing, knowing your past, your position, and your passion. You need to connect with your passion. You need to connect with your passion. Our passion is tied to our spiritual gifts, which are connected to things that we like. Our passion is tied to our spiritual gifts, which are connected or found in things that we like. Our passion directs the compass of our life. Our passion directs the compass of our life. So in order to effectively plan, we must be aware of our past, passion and position. We must be aware of our past. Where am I? Where I come from? Who am I? How did I get to be? Our passion. What's my purpose? What am I in love with? And what's my position? How do I fit in the bigger picture? How do I fit? Where am I? Then you can plan. Then you can start planning. If you don't have those things, in my opinion, you may struggle. Second P is preparation. Rap has been a part of our music culture for over five decades. I met this brother behind rap, and he's a lyricist. I mean, he has some, some words. I'm still going to be miracle. I'm still going to be miracle. Um, rap has been a part of our music culture for over five decades. Rappers use this art form as a tool to exercise civil disobedience and to chronicle the urban experience. Rap has, in some ways, strayed from its origin. Some artists use this art form to paint a poisonous picture of the possibilities as well as an artificial roadmap for life. A clear departure from where this art form began. 
I heard a very talented orator, theologian, educated young brother earlier this year who encouraged those under the sound of his voice to use rap in a different way in order to get prepared for life. He said rap like this. R, read every day. Every day. Not Zane, not Playboy, not the wanted ads. But rather authors like Hume and Yuko and, and Vygotsky and Plato and Baldwin and Wasanga and Leary and Othello and Howard. And he said, he said, read not simply to just regurgitate what the author said to say to somebody else that I said something when really you read it somewhere else. That ain't why you read. He said, you read rather to engage the author and parallel your experience with what's going on in the book. What's going on in that magazine? I want to relate. Can I relate to that? Where, where, where have I seen what I'm reading in my world? And so what this does is help me to get a clearer understanding of myself, my surroundings, and my purpose. That's why we read, among other things. But those are some essential things why we read. There's an old adage that I'm sure all of you are aware of and know, and you heard it before. If you want to hide something, and I'm, I'm kind of changing it up a little bit, but if you want to hide something from someone, you put it, you put it in a book. And so we wonder why when people say uh, brothers are lost, uh, 21st generation is lost, the reason why they lost is because things have been hidden from them that was accessible, they chose not to go get. So you're gonna stay lost. And you are the person who can help find your way out to find the light. You are the person, it's in a book. He said, hey, rap, read every day, hey, ask questions. He said the difference between a professor and a toddler is their vocabulary. The difference between me and my daughter is our vocabulary. He said the difference between a professor and a toddler is their vocabulary. Professors just ask more sophisticated questions. They do the same thing that toddlers do, they ask questions. How come, why, what, who, how, same questions. Rap, read every day, ask questions, and then P said to push yourself to solve your community's problems. Don't equal excel. Don't meet the mark, create a new mark. Don't be a part of the problem, find a solution. <coughs> we don't need another Biggie, LeBron, Michael Jordan, I love all these men, Sammy Sosa, Derek Thomas, Derek Rose. We need somebody to cure cancer. We have all those guys out there. You don't wanna be the next one, be the next you. They are the next them, or the them. You be the next you. We need somebody to cure cancer, lupus, AIDS. We need problem solvers, not problem creators. We need them. We all, each of us need them. And so if you rap, wherever you plan to end up, you will certainly increase your chances. Wherever you plan to end up, if you rap while you do it, you'll certainly increase your, your chances. Planning, the next P. Preparation. Preparation. The next P is presentation. The woman, the car, the house, the suit, the shoe, etc. The food, we all chose based on how it was presented. I'm saying again. The woman, the car, the man, the house, the suit, the shoe, the food, we all chose yes, sir. based on how it was presented. That's how we chose it. No, no hocus pocus, no extra stuff. We chose it based on how it was presented. We first communicate our plan and level of preparation by our presentation. We first communicate to people what our plan is, our level of preparation by our presentation. 
What is your presentation saying about your plan and preparation? What is your presentation? Rhetorical question. Just meditate on it, no answer. What is your what is my presentation? Let me make it personal. What is my presentation saying about my plan and my preparation? That's presentation in a nutshell. Okay, planning. The next one is people. Psychologists study human behavior and they can gather a lot of information about a person based on the people they hang around. People can create obstacles for you or opportunities. People can create obstacles for you or opportunities. Our level of planning, degree of preparation, type of presentation will either draw people or distract people. Necessary to aid in my growth and my development and my goal attainment. Our level of planning, our degree of preparation, our type of presentation will either draw or distract people necessary to help aid in my growth, in my development, and in my attainment of the goals I've set for myself. Planning. Preparation. <coughs> they, 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 they kind of go in line. You'll figure it'll make sense to you after a while. Plan, preparation, presentation, people. The next one is patience. Baking the cake, ordering food at a restaurant, childbirth, high school, college, savings account, trade, homework, all are processes that involve a concept known as delayed gratification. That's it. This is where the amount of work that I put in doesn't instantly produce a result. Rather, the benefits of the work is seen after an extended amount of time. Delayed gratification. It's in all of us because all of our forefathers and mothers had to delay their gratification for years, 400 years. 400 years of, of putting in work, planning, preparing, until one day they were released from bondage. It was in you. It's, it's carved in you. You were innately born with it. But yet we choose to fall victim to what the world has said, do it quick, do it now, right now. The process of positioning yourself to compete requires a high degree of patience. From my experience, the only dependable measure for maintaining a consistent level of patience is from having a mentor and a reflective process. Mentors encourage, boost confidence, gives us a pair of eyes that will see things that our two eyes have limitations in seeing, and mentors unlock a person's will, the final P, will to persevere. Okay, help me out. Planning. Perseverance. The six P's of positioning. Positioning. Before I close, I need to return back to the tie trigger piece. Uh, I think it's powerful uh, because actually that it, that this actually works out better having that in because it's going to remind you to find the message and discard the messenger. I'm a package. Just like uh, uh, the package that that food came in, that I'm discardable. Our lives, discardable. They're used for a purpose. What's yours? I think a lot of people are, are, are kind of frustrated with being stagnant. A lot of people are, are you know, just needing direction right now. We want to know, Lord, what's next? And so this music is the soundtrack to the fresh life that's coming to us. Now, when you say mistakes, mm -hmm. how has your opinion changed since you went through what you had to go through when people say they made mistakes in life? Mm -hmm. How has your opinion changed with that now? Grounded me, humbled me. I grew up very uh, strict. So with that type of upbringing, I just developed this self righteousness this um, just a lot of pride, like I don't do this, I don't smoke, I don't, and God was like, boom, boy, please, you are not above anybody you sing to, and you're not even above the message you present. Wow. 
You understand what I'm saying? We're not. We're not above the speakers and preachers. We're not above the word. We preach. Paul even said, he was talking, he said, you know what? It's not that I have already attained, but I press toward the mark. Here's the preacher telling you, I ain't even reached that level yet, but I press toward the mark. And so it gave me more compassion and it gave me more understanding that, like Donna McClurkin said, we all fall down, mm -hmm. but it don't stay there. We get right back up. Woo! We get right back up. Um, I hope I'll share something with someone and that someone will hear and it will help jumpstart or further encourage them to get into a position to compete. Thank you all, I appreciate you. I know it was tough uh, right after dinner, but thank you, thank you again, Dr. McDowell. Thank you again, Suggs, I appreciate you, God bless. So he gave us a plan for positioning ourselves to compete. So what did you hear him say? What did you hear him say? Understand your past, your passion, and your position. You gotta never forget where you came from, figure out what you like to do, and then figure out where you standing in your life to get that done. I heard that um, basically the most I took out of it was that um, like nobody, whether it's a coach or a teacher or somebody, they are never like more than the word is. And like, you gotta know the word no matter what, you know what I mean? Like everybody's going towards the subject, you know, and the difference between like a toddler and a teacher is their vocabulary. So like, they still ask questions, but they're more uh, smarter questions, you know, they're more intelligent questions. And that's the difference between a toddler and a teacher. Uh, back, you brought up delay and gratification. Sometimes we want those immediate results, but we do have to put that work in, that initial plan and preparation. And, and also what was profound you said about the presentation. We do choose based on the presentation, whether it's a car, food, a soulmate, and so presentation is important so we have to even look at ourselves and see how we're presenting ourselves and I like also the rap concept you know reading every day asking questions and pushing ourselves to solve our community problems so it was an awesome message those six things um, and especially passion for me um, because I'm trying to actively pursue my passion patience because Viz, you know, I, I, I got a problem with starting things. And if it don't work, it work out in a certain time frame, it's like, oh, I was wasting my time and it's over. And, you know, we kept on saying pa patience, patience, patience. You know, it's like we all need it, you know, especially if you're in a, trying to be an entrepreneur or investing your time in anything. Um, the patience, like you said, is the thing I see. And passion. Uh, uh, me and my brother was talking about this. Uh, I see people, they say, hey, Rod, you still doing the music and stuff like that? And um, I go, yeah, I'm still doing it uh, because it's my passion. And working with um, young people is my passion. And the thing is, it's not a job to me because I'm doing my passion. Some people work a job where I'm living boxes, I'm working in a warehouse because that's what I got to do to pay my bills. But when you do something you love, it's easy. It's almost like you're not doing nothing because it's a lifestyle. And, and that's what people don't understand. When it's a lifestyle, you do it because you love it. All right, Tyron, you heard what the uh, participants heard you say. And of uh, all the things they heard you say, what you said. If there was one thing that you wanted them to remember, no matter what. I think um, to be used by God. I think if they remember to be used by God and allow themselves to be a broken vessel, that, that it'll take them so far beyond what I said. So the six P's in position is just a piece of the puzzle. But being used by God is greater. And so when you allow God to hold your hand and guide your steps, you destined for greatness. And as you're working with, you mentioned mentoring programs and you've worked with several before. As you look at the young men and you think about their, what we call their sometimes core fault, what do you see as things that can possibly improve? Uh, the poor follow-through, um, positioning themselves around people who have 
uh, foresight, who, who've been places where they're trying to be. Uh, environment is so key to survival. And so if, if I'm trying to make it somewhere, my environment has to be such that it is speaking life, not death. And as they struggle with that, because I know we've talked to several of the young men who said they're, as they are in this transformation stage, that's one of the hardest parts for them, kind of giving up those old playgrounds and old playmates. And it's hard for them to be transforming and go back home, and that environment has not changed. What would be your message to them to help them through that struggle? Well, I'd like to say to them that they should look at it as expanding not necessarily transforming but you are you're growing you're adding to you're not leaving anything you're not throwing anything away you're not discarding anything but you're expanding where your boundaries and so if they understand it, it's an expansion not a uh, de depletion or decrease but it's an expanding that of where they're where they are and um, that transformation piece will happen more fluidly Again, I think in their struggle, again, I'm speaking in conversations we've had, even in the thought of expanding, if the people around me do not understand that expansion, and I'm not yet willing to, I'm not, have not yet mastered the bicultural thing, where I can live in both worlds, as one young man shared with me. I hear what you're saying, Dr. McDowell, but I haven't quite figured out how to go back home and have them say to me, you're talking different and you're acting different and you don't belong here. So I do certain things so they know I'm still down with the community, but you can't be both. You can't serve two sure. masters. So your pearl of wisdom to them would be? It's to understand their value. You have to understand what your purpose is, my value, so that no matter where I go, I know I never lose sense of who I am, and that I am not, I am not um, um, a slave to any one group, uh, but yet to God, um, and that if I know who I am and whose I am, I, I'm, I'm fine transforming, transfixing, transplacing. I, I feel more comfortable in that, in that. So understanding my value. Well, thank you. I think they heard what you had to say, and I'm glad you spent this time. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you. <laughs>